Hello everyone, welcome to the part 2 of orthodontic synopsis. The stains used in vital staining technique are alizarin, tripton blue, tetracycline, lead acetate, etc. This particular technique is used to study the opposition of bone and it was introduced by Belcher. The mixed dentition period can be classified into three phases that is first transitional period, intertransitional period and second transitional period. First transitional period is characterized by the emergence of first permanent molars and the second deciduous incisors with the permanent incisors. Let's see in this picture. This is first permanent molar and these are the permanent incisors. Okay, so this is the uh, first transitional period. Intertransitional period is relatively stable and no change occurs. Second transitional period is characterized by replacement of deciduous molars and canines by premolars and permanent cuspids. Let's have a look. Okay, these are the molars and canine and these are the premolars and permanent canine. Okay, then, okay, then the shift in lower molar from a flush terminal plane to a class 1 relation occurs in two ways. Early shift occurs by utilizing primate space while later shift occurs by utilizing the leeway space. So in this particular sentence there are few terminologies which we are uh, supposed to know. First is flush terminal plane. What is flush terminal plane? It is a normal feature of deciduous dentition where the distal surfaces of upper and lower second deciduous molars are in same vertical plane. Okay. For transition of such an end on molar relation to a class 1 molar relation, lower molar has to move forward by about 3 to 5 mm relative to upper molar. For this transition of such an end on molar relation to a class 1 molar relation, lower molar has to move forward by about 3 to 5 mm relative to upper molar. Utilization of physiologic spaces and leeway space in lower arch and by differential forward growth of mandible. Okay, so how do we attain that 3 to 5 mm? by using the physiological spaces, leeway spaces and differential forward growth of the mandible. Shift in lower molar from a flush terminal plane to a class 1 relation can occur in two ways. One is early shift, another is late shift. So what is early shift? In this particular shift, the permanent molar exerts force on the uh, deciduous first and second molars these are known as eruptive forces okay and once they put those forces these uh, teeth moves forward closing the primate space and uh, establish a class 1 molar relationship since this occurs early in mixed period it is called as early denting early shift i'm sorry it is called as early shift What is late shift? Many children lack these primate spaces and thus erupting permanent molars are unable to move forward to establish this class 1 relationship. In these cases, when deciduous second molars exfoliate, permanent first molars drift mesially utilizing leeway spaces. This occurs in late mixed dentition period, hence it is called as late shift. So in early shift, they utilize primate spaces and in late shift, they utilize 
leave spaces. So what are these primate and leave spaces? Primate space is located mesial to the maxillary canine and distal to the mandibular canine. These are the primate spaces. Then we have leave space. Okay, it is the difference between the combined width of primary first and second molar and canine to the combined width of the premolars and permanent canine. In maxillary arch, it is 1.8 mm, 0.9 mm on each side of the arch. And in mandible, it is 3.4 mm. These spaces, this, okay. So in mandible, it is 3.4 mm, 1.7 mm on each side. So we know the meaning of these terminologies now what is flush terminal plane and early shift late shift primate space leeway space okay? okay the difference between the amount of space needed for the accommodation of incisors and the amount of space available is called incisal liability the incisal liability is roughly about 7 mm in maxillary arch and 5 mm in mandibular arch. So, the difference between amount of space needed for the accommodation of incisors and amount of space available for this is called incisal liability. As we know, the permanent incisors are, are much larger than the deciduous ones. So, the space required to accommodate these larger teeth is known as incisal liability okay for maxillary it's 7 mm and mandibular it is 5 mm so how do we recover that one is by interdental spaces which are present between the deciduous teeth here these are the interdental spaces then by increasing intercanine width and change in incisor inclinations Then there's ugly duckling stage. It's a self-correcting and transient malocclusion seen in maxillary incisor region at the age of 8 to 9 years. You can see in this picture, this is the ugly duckling stage. It is also known as broadband phenomena due to the force exerted by erupting canines on the roots of incisors okay as it is mentioned it is self-correcting and uh, no need to worry for this particular phenomenon okay so primate spaces are also known as simian spaces anthropoid spaces these are seen mesial to maxillary canines and distal to mandibular canines these spaces help in placement of the canine cusp of the opposing arch. The different okay. then there is leeway space of nans, which we have already read. This is the difference between combined mesiodistal width of deciduous canines and molars to combined mesiodistal width of permanent canines and premolars. Okay. Which is 3.5 mandible in mandible and 1.5. 8 mm in maxilla then there is some data which you need to buy heart the adult human body contains 206 bones the skull at birth contains 45 bones adult skull is made up of 22 bones okay so at birth we have 45 bones and adult skull is made up of 22 bones, 14 facial and 8 cranial. Total vertebrae in human body are 33, 7, cer 7 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5, 5, sac 5 sacral, 4 caucasian. So it is 7, 12, 5, 5. 
so total vertebrae are 33 total number of cranial nerves 12 pairs it's pairs okay total number of 31 nerves, 31 pairs okay eight cervical 12 pairs thoracic five pairs lumbar five pairs sacral and one cockishel okay so how many cranial nerves 12 pairs total number of spinal nerves 31 pairs 8 cervical 12 thoracic 5 lumbar 5 sacral and 5 uh, and 1 cockishel so it's 8 12 5 5 1 total number of ribs are 12 7 pairs are true ribs and the next 5 pairs ribs 11th 12th pairs are known as floating ribs okay so total number of ribs are 12 7 are true 5 are false 11th 12th are floating ribs growth of face is completed in following sequence that is first width then depth and then height okay width depth and height then there are some diagnostic aids these are essential and these are supplemental so what are the essential ones that is case history clinical examination study models that you need to make iopa bite wing panoramic radiographs facial photographs okay so these are the essential ones case history, clinical examination, study models, IOPA, bite wing, panoramic, radiographs, facial photography. Then, then in supplemental diagnostic aids, these are specialized radiographs, occlusiograms, hand wrist radiographs, endocrine tests, diagnostic setup, electromyographic examination, of muzzle activity and physio prints and supplemental supplemental ones so this is it for part 2 see you in the next video thank you so much for watching